if you don't deal with it and, and heal, you know, you'll continue spinning, you know, around in circles, you know, like a wheel, you know what I mean? You keep just going, going around, around, and around. It never goes away, you know? Welcome to my channel. My name is Frances. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, please like, share, and subscribe. Welcome to New Light TV. Today I'm going to be talking to one of my friends, one of my brothers in Christ. Very talented, very formal, very poetic. Tony Wyatt. Yes. <laughs> hey, Tony. We were talking, we've been talking for a little bit about toxic relationships and about not giving yourself time to heal and so many different things we've touched on i was a little toxic in my youth too you know when i was mm. 21 22 i think we all were yeah you point. know i was a little so i wanted to bring him on because you know sometimes we think that us females tend to think that men are the only toxic ones that men are the only negative ones that the men are the only ones that need healing or parenting or I wanted to ask you about your past, about your past relationships. Oh my God, dig into my past now. Well, I'll tell you about one specific relationship that I was in. I think it was the most toxic one mm -hmm. that I was in. Um, I was with a woman. We, we worked together. Mm -hmm. The signs were there. I chose to um, accept that, you know, and... You know to give it a shot so you see her spaz out yes i see her spaz out on the technicians like blowing up with them and then i'm like oh, yeah. but i choose to ignore them right why because you know i didn't have christ in my life at that time to ask for guidance not thinking with this head but the other how right? old are you i was about I think I was about 20, 21, 25, around there, you know? Uh, I'm only 26 now. <laughs> we end up getting in a relationship. Um, I took on the responsibilities of, you know, her kids, which means, you know, providing because one comes with the other, you know what I mean? So How, how long were you guys together? We worked together for eight years. Okay. Ask me how much of that time... I was actually truly happy, maybe the first six months. There's another oh gosh, side so to the story. Oh gosh, you got to story. see her kids grow up and yes, everything? Yes, You know, I got oh. really attached to her daughter, the youngest That's one. That's Yeah. Um, found out that she was into brujaria. We moved in together, right? Um, but we were always fighting drugs, alcohol right um you know promiscuity it's just like when uh, you hear these stories about men doing it to women come home drunk right and um beating on his wife you know she didn't beat on me obviously i can defend myself you know I, no but there are women that do beat on men but um and they could and the not hit her that, back exactly the thing mm -hmm. is that she knew that i wouldn't hit her back mm -hmm. so she would take advantage of that I found out that she was cheating multiple times with different people. And, I and you still, guys never talked about an open relationship? No. Or? I still stood there. It was so toxic. Uh, Did she ever try to control you? Oh, controlling. She, was, was, she used to minimize you and belittle yes. you? I was suffering emotionally, mentally, because they, you know, they, they speak to you in such a condescending way mm. that you feel worthless. Mm -hmm. You know, you've lost the sense of who you are. Mm -hmm. you know, people ask me, why I stood there. To this day, I couldn't tell you why because when I look back at it, it's like, oh, why was I there this long? Cursing, fighting, the kids would see us fighting. The apology comes. And then you're you thinking know? that they are gonna change and you do already have a relationship yeah. with this person and you want it to work. You, you take it back and mm -hmm. then you start again and it's nice for a little bit. That's how you get stuck in the power exactly. and control dynamics exactly. because then it starts again. Now it's the mm -hmm. love phase. Now exactly. the honeymoon. Now I love you. You're the mm -hmm. best. I'm so sorry, babe. And then the other side of this that I was mentioning earlier was, you know, the whole brujaria thing. One day, you know, I'm doing laundry and I noticed in one of her underwears was a picture of me wrapped up right and tucked in a corner 
another time I found a picture, not a, yeah, a picture of me, small like passport picture, wrapped up in a five dollar bill and stuck in a honey jar. <laughs> I don't know what was going on. Listen, I had to get out of there. And let me tell you, by, by the skin you know, of my You teeth, know, amen, that was God that got you. Yeah. Right. But those things, like, you know, people would like to say, oh, that witchcraft doesn't have power, the devil mm -hmm. doesn't have power, this and that, and the third. You give it the power it has. The here. devil has power. Mm -hmm. oh, the yes. devil has yes. power. He's only yes. limited in power because God is all powerful. But the enemy definitely has power and people definitely have his power because they yield to him and they and they do these things, these rituals and these prayers and all these things. And the enemy has minions. It's not him. It's not Satan. Mm -hmm. It's his minions, right, that are out there. And they, they say, okay, let's do a pact. Yeah. Let's do a little contract. And then the person that's on the other side and the receiving end, and I'm sorry, I just want to clarify a little no, bit. Go ahead. The people that are on the other side, you know, that are falling prey to this, the work, the works of the devil. Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. Um, those people are only prey because they don't have, or they're not in the covering of God. So once you come into Christ, now you have the covering. Now when you renounce these the past, when you start breaking soul ties, when you start renouncing the, the packs that you yourself have made. Oh, I'll never leave you. When you tell somebody, I'm always going to love you. I'll mm -hmm. always be your woman. Uh, he, you're always going to be my man. You know, you're vowing, you're contracting, you're, you're mm -hmm. making a contract it's a verbal in the contract. spirit. Yeah. You know, and you got to break those things. Look where this conversation went. Glory to Jesus. Don't worry about it. <laughs> it all, it all, it all intertwines. Praise the you Lord, know? you know. But, but Jesus has the power to yes. break all, everything. Yes, and that's what he know? did. You know, and thank God. I'm so happy that I found God, you know what I mean? Because there's nothing like him, right? All that other stuff, you know, doesn't nothing compares because that maybe it might work for some temporary reason, temporary time, but God's, God's work is everlasting, you know? He saw how I was suffering and by the skin of my teeth and the grace of God, because it, it had to be no one else but him that got me out of there. You know, and even when he did it in such a way that it was her that didn't want me no more. Devastated, right? Oh my God, why are you leaving me? And God said, no, it's not happening. Mm -hmm. I am removing you from this and I will not allow you to go back. I will block everything you try to do to go back there. And it ended up like her hating me. Now I'm hurt. Right? And what does what do hurt people do? Hurt people. Exactly. So I moved on to other relationships. You've been around. Carrying all of know? that. And I, I was I was you Hefner back in the day. <laughs> so it turns out that I started doing what mm. she was doing to me mm -hmm. to others subconsciously. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And um, I didn't realize it. I met another girl and I got I fell in love with her, or at least that's what I thought it was. And that relationship didn't last long, thank God, because I saw very early the signs, because I already like, had experience. Yeah. Right? I love that we can do that, that yeah. we can see what already happened and not even waste our time. Yeah. Call it, you know, life lessons that, that we learn from, you know? You learn when you get burned. I had friends that I called best friends at that time mm -hmm. that, you know, I was, you know, I would lay my life down for that person. And... God revealed to me in this time that those people are not your friends. He removed them as well. This was God's way of removing. He's so good, man. He, his way of removing the people from my life that he didn't want there. And, and I didn't see it as a Did blessing. You, was it sad? It was yeah, hurt. it was sad, right? right. Yeah, it yeah, was yeah. sad. It was very hurtful, mm -hmm. you know? Because it's not just, you know, relationships that we get hurt in. Right. Friendships are relationships mm -hmm. too, you know? Family. And, mm -hmm. Yes. And, and... I was deceived by my best friend. You understand? Deceived and, and went behind my back to do things and, and it's okay now. You know, I forgave them. But you know, that hurt that I don't carry that hurt anymore. I actually thank God for that now. I have situations like yeah. that too. And then, and looking back though, I, I can see like, wow, thank you, Jesus. Like I mm -hmm. like my life could have turned out a yeah, completely, completely different, different way. You know, but going back to the toxicity mm -hmm. and the and the 
you know, those are, you know, to bring it back to a biblical mm -hmm. term, that song, those women, those two particular women, they sound like Jezebels. Mm -hmm. They sound like Jezebels to me. And they sound like they have like narcissistic you tendencies. Jezebel, you. Yeah, they yes. sound oh, yeah. right narcissistic. Yeah, yeah. very self centered. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, controlling, yeah. charismatic, yeah. nice people to everyone oh, yes. else. Oh, yeah, sweet. They could buy you with a smile. Uh, but you very know, charming, very, charming. very pretty. Mm -hmm. You know. Just look at me, I'm handsome. I attract pretty. What is it about you? You think that you allow those yeah. people to love you like that? You know, because we accept the love that we believe we're worth, right? So you did say it, that they that things, you felt like it's it robbed okay. you of your identity. I mean, but there's something you were allowing at the of time. Of course, but you know, a lot of these things root back to when we were kids. Right. You know what I mean? Okay. Thank um, you. My, <laughs> you know, um, I didn't get enough attention when I was a child, you know? Um, I felt abandoned, you know? My daddy wasn't there, so now I got daddy issues, you know? I need a man in my life, you know? Do you, do you see that those women were like your your mother or any other female figures in your life yeah, at the it time? Could, it could, like it could have been up. that, you know? It could have been that I grew up you know, in a, in a, in a background where, um, I saw my mother abused, you know what I mean? Um, it wasn't normal, but maybe over time, subconsciously it became normal, you know what I mean? That's why I stood there so long. I had a professor in class that he tells me, he, I, I have a daughter and I date my daughter, right? That's I nice. take her out mm -hmm. on dates, treat her the way a man should be. So when she does find mm -hmm. a man, she knows how mm -hmm, to be treated, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? So a lot of the times, our parents never taught us mm -hmm. how we should be treated, how we should be respected, mm -hmm. right? This is why we stay and allow things to continue so long mm -hmm. and deal with the toxicity, you know? Yeah. But it's a very good time. For me, I was, it was like uh, my dad, when I was younger, my dad always warned me about, about guys and he would always say like, don't let them touch you this way mm -hmm. or don't don't ever sit on a man's lap mm -hmm. and you know it, when i was younger you know in my teens and my mid-20s and stuff like that i think that i didn't really pay attention to my dad some good lemonade <laughs> you're welcome <laughs> i guess want to pay attention to my dad because mm -hmm. i i still listen but i was still you know right. sleeping around and stuff like that looking for love like mm -hmm. all of us you know I started to really think like, wow, my dad actually put, like gave me a sense of, of worth. You know, yeah. he, he, he imparted that in me, even though it wasn't probably like taking somebody on a date, but it is a value because mm -hmm. I'm not going to allow any man to just rub up on me and da 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 da. You mm -hmm. know, there are women out there that they do. You know, and even men, like they love to, to catch a feel, a, a, a copper feel, you know, or like a free feel too, because uh -huh. it's just free. It's, like, it's nothing, no attachment yeah. involved, it's you know? No respect, no respect, respect you know? stories where girls didn't know how to deal with their period me because you know what i mean there was never no one there to teach them you know but my mom was there which is the craziest thing mm. like i never talk about myself can be there stuff. they can be but, there, but no, not yeah. there yeah like not like they yeah. like you could have emotionally absent parents physically. yeah and they could but, be emotionally absent exactly. you know or you could have no companionship with them, no relationship, like just literally like mom and child, you know? And that's why I like the work that I do because I get to talk, right. I get to confront these issues, you know? I have, a, I had a lot of issues growing up because of my upbringing, because I had mommy issues, yeah. you know? And I had daddy issues too. Like the way I saw God was like the way I saw my dad, right. you know? Like he was there, but I could never really ask him for favors. I could not really ask him for money. Like, I couldn't really, you know, so, like, when I came to God, like, I'm over here trying to pray, and I'm praying these broke prayers mm -hmm. <laughs> to this little God, you know? Yeah, and God is yeah. like, yo, but I'm big, like. You know, I had an abusive stepfather, you know, and I could talk about this now because it doesn't affect me anymore. I, it doesn't have power over me anymore, you know? Um, my mother was, you know, I love my mother, but she was never there for me because she was always away working. So working. I grew up in Guyana. She was always here in the States working and sending money back, you know? So I really didn't have a sense of guidance. And truth be told, I didn't have that sense of guidance until I found God. He changed my life, you know? And, and, and I had to heal from a lot of things, even from my 
mm -hmm. relationships, you know? I had to heal and who knows, maybe I'm still healing. You know, there's, there's always some undealt with emotion there, you know? My That's mentor, Jeannie, she says, um, she says that we're like onions, like an onion. Mm -hmm. You know, when you peel Either off way. the first mm -hmm. layer, you think you think that's it, right? No, nope, there's another layer. Yeah. And there's another layer. And yeah. there's another layer, mm -hmm. you know, and it's so true. Mm -hmm. If you don't if you don't deal with it, you know, if you don't deal with it and, and heal, you know, you'll continue spinning you know around in circles you know like a wheel you know what i mean you keep just going, going around around and around it never goes away if you don't you take know. the time to heal even if it hurts while well, you're doing that because yeah. to heal you need to hurt <laughs> oh yes yeah. you know for men mm -hmm. it's usually harder for them to yeah. deal with their emotions mm -hmm. a lot of times you know um i forgot who was it that said to me once they said if a man don't cry, he will beat you because mm -hmm. he has no way of letting that emotion out, you know? Um, men find it hard to deal with emotions, you know? If I cry, society puts that, that stigma on men that, oh, if I cry, I'm, I'm, I'm a punk, you know? But that's not true. It takes a real man to show his emotions. Yeah, it's not true. You know? It's not true at all. It's hard for women to try to love on a man and help a man mm -hmm. when he's quiet and shut shut down, shut off from the world because they're afraid of being judged, mm -hmm. afraid of being rejected, mm -hmm. afra afraid of not being man enough. Right. You know, and this man enough thing, like, who made it up? It's machismo. Yeah, like, who made it up, yeah. you know? And I think about my brothers and my cousins. I think about my father. I think about my uncles. I think yeah. about all these men that you know and even when i have kids like i will be so concerned you know because i don't i wouldn't want to to keep my child yeah. from fully expressing yeah. themselves because yeah. that is so yeah. frustrating you know and yeah you are walking around angry when you're depressed and you can't cry or you can't tell anybody about your depression or the loneliness or the anxiety that you feel when you just cannot express yourself period yeah. it causes an inner turmoil of frustration so crazy that you will definitely punch yeah. somebody in the face without think, even wanting to <laughs> think about it. for instance it's like when you have you know a pimple right you got all that nasty stuff in there you know those pimples those, those pimple that hurt the ones you get on your nose you've had those before right you know and it doesn't stop hurting or heal until you let out what's inside so that's why it's important for men i know it's a little yucky analogy but <laughs> That's why it's important to deal with the nasty stuff and cry. Once you let out what you're feeling inside by crying, you feel better, right? You get better. So until you deal with it, you won't feel better. Yeah, you know? that's good. And you know people who like, oh, you can self-heal, mm -hmm. you can meditate yourself into it and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, those things are partially true and everything. Mm -hmm. But I believe that the truest healing, the, the healing that will get you to your core the core you know how we're talking about the onion yeah, earlier uh -huh. like it's the core that's where you need healing it's not just healing yeah. a little scab or healing you know this little thing that happened the other day no you need to heal your yeah. core because that's where all the undealt with emotions are in the core yeah the human mind works like that things we don't want to deal with subconscious we, we hide it it gets stored it gets stored and it's hidden way back there you know what i mm -hmm. mean and you don't deal with it but you not dealing with it is affecting what I'm doing right now. Mm -hmm, you mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, and all my relationships. Yeah, I get into all my all my work all my work history. Uh huh. Yeah. And, and everything. I'm bringing everything with me mm -hmm. to the next relationship. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And, and if I don't deal with it, the next person gonna have to deal with it. So talking about the toxic relationships mm -hmm. and our upbringing and all the hurt and the pain that everyone, because even if you have never been in a toxic relationship, you have suffered something somehow, somebody has offended you, mm -hmm. you have had something happen, you know, most of us have, you know, which stood in your subconscious somewhere, you know, penetrated your identity in some way, you know, or it's stopping you from doing what, what you're supposed to do, what God wants you to do, you know? In a practical sense, what we do is that we air it out, we let it out, we give it to God. We don't just, mm -hmm. you know, throw it up to whoever w is willing to listen. Right. So you, <laughs> you, now, know, you have to be right. wise. You have to be wise who you're telling your stuff to, who you're going to for counsel, who, who you have praying for you, and that kind of thing, you yeah. know? But even in relationships, 
I can't guarantee that that just because you're Christian, even if you're the truest Christian ever, that you can guard my heart. Mm -hmm. I have to guard my heart for myself. The Bible says it. Above all, guard your heart. It's your responsibility. Yeah. You know, we're imperfect. Everything flows through it. Everything flows through yeah. it. it. Like you said, it hurt. Even if I don't want to hurt you, you know what I mean? But it's I may good to do express something, it. I may do something that you don't like and it hurts you, you know what I mean? But I don't know unless you tell me about mm -hmm. it. And you that's know? why it's good to mm -hmm. express it. Yeah, exactly. because then it's going to go in you inside of you and it's going to stay there and it's going to get stuck. Mm -hmm. And it's going to go into your core, mm -hmm. you know, and affect Goes your identity the somewhere. Yeah. The core is like your, your CPU, your memory card. That's yeah. where we store everything. And unless, you know, when you want to, you have to retrieve it from there. And open it up and deal with it. You mm -hmm, know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So we spoke about so many things, guys. This was a very, very productive conversation for me. So I much. know for you guys too. So if the people were to get anything from this message, what would you like for them to take away? What I what I would say you should take away from this is try to find you know, talk to God. Right? Ask God to guide you. Right? Because with God in the center, nothing can enter, nothing, no one can do any harm or hurt you in any kind of way, you know, to avoid toxic relationships, you pray and ask God to bring you the right person, you know, uh, don't, don't do the worldly dating thing, you know, try to find someone with the same core beliefs as you, because when you, when you have God in your relationship, those things go away, you know? We don't say, oh, we're through it. We say, let's work through it, you know what I mean? Together. You have to find people with a like kind mind, you know what I mean? And to avoid all that toxicity, you have to have God in your relationship, you know? And, and it, I learned the hard way, but that's why I'm here to tell you, you know what I mean? Well, one of the things that I would take away from what we spoke about today is that you have to confront your stuff you know whether it's your upbringing whether it's toxic relationships whether it's your friends that betrayed you left you whatever you know your your parent left you here or your parent beat you here or your parent sold you here you know all that stuff like we have to find a place of forgiveness and confrontation with god in god because we can do it on our own. Yes, we may. The true healer is God. The true Amen. healing comes That's from right. God. He knows your core. He knows what mm -hmm. pieces are broken in your heart, what yes. pieces are broken in your mindset, what you truly believe, what you truly desire. God knows us better than we know ourselves. God can mm -hmm. heal even the things that you don't know you need healing from. Yeah. You know, and sometimes we think that it's relationships or we think it's this that happened mm -hmm. or that that happened. But it's the, much deeper but God that. knows what happened to you when you were two years mm -hmm. old, when you were three years old. You probably don't remember, but God knows. And he can take you to that place. Amen. Amen. So thank you, Tony, for being oh, here. It was a pleasure. You know, I um, hope that, you know, you guys get a takeaway from this. And hopefully she invites me back again soon. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We give you glory, Lord God, and praise, my God. You are awesome. Thank Always. you, Jesus. Thank you for bringing this topic today. Thank you for bringing this topic today, Lord God, for leading us in conversation, Lord, for giving us insight yes, in Father, our own processes, you. in our own histories, in our own upbringings, Lord God, that would edify the viewers, Lord God. I pray in the name of Jesus that each person that is watching and listening lord god would be blessed lord god that they would find their way through healing lord and god i pray for tony and myself for our family members and our friends that yes. may need healing lord god that may be experiencing you know issues from their their childhood issues from past relationships That's issues right, from negative self-talk yes. lord god issues from comparison issues from self-esteem whatever kind of issues lord god that they may need healing from lord i pray that they would find that in you my god i pray that your presence that your comfort be with them lord god in the name of jesus i pray that you open their eyes to see themselves yes, how you jesus. see them lord god yes. and that everything they do lord god would somehow in some way glorify you lord that even their mistakes their failures their fears lord god would somehow turn around to please you and bring you glory lord god 
I pray that you reveal yourself to each peop each person, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. That each person, Lord God, would know who you are. By your stripes, we are healed, my God. And I pray that they would know your power, the power of your resurrection, Lord God, because you died for our sins so that we may live a new life, Lord God. You were, you were slain, Lord God, before the foundations of the earth, Lord, and you knew what we were going to go through. You knew how our parents were, were going to be, Lord. You knew what pains we would suffer, Lord God, but you died so that we would not have to die in your place, Lord God. I thank you for your sacrifice. I thank you for healing. I thank you for prosperity. I thank you for love. I thank you for wisdom, my God. I thank you for purpose, Lord God. And I pray for Tony, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, that you will continue to use him and build him up as the man of God that he is, Lord God, and that he will continue to become God in the name of Jesus. I pray that you will continue to heal his heart, continue to retrain his mind, renew his thinking, Lord God, as the way you want him to think, Lord God, as the things that you want him to put his hands to do, Lord God, as where you want his voice to go, Lord God. I pray that whatever ideas he may have, Lord God, will be blessed, Lord God, with your insight, Lord, with your Holy Spirit cooking over him, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, that he will no longer move according to his own will and purpose, Lord God, and that every and any relationship that he will have, Lord God, would come from you, Lord, that they would be blessed, because they came from you, Lord God. Amen. I pray, Lord, that you give him discernment and wisdom in all that he does, God. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen, amen and amen. amen. Thank you. Amen. And we will see you guys next time. God bless Woo. you.